Hi guys, this is Faridin. I'm resident of the Department of Surgery at the Hospital University of Pennsylvania. Welcome you to the pathology lecture. Today we'll talk about an important topic of scar formation. So before we go into the depth of pathological scar formation, let's understand how normal scar formation happens. So this is a little diagram or table that I drew. Hopefully it'll make the understanding a little bit better. So on the bottom we have time. So we have time of injury, three days, seven days, three weeks, and a year. We have different phases of wound healing. So we have inflammatory phase, proliferative phase, and remodeling phase. The cells that are involved in those phases and the type of collagen that you can see during those phases. So let's just kind of try to go over an example, see how this works. So let's say the time of injury. Let's say Faridin here made a cut with a scalpel during a surgery over the skin, and uh, that's a time of injury. Now, what do you think is the first cell that's going to arrive in that area? Now, the common misconception that people think is, oh, it must be the neutrophils because they get there the first. I mean, most of the time it's correct, but platelets during a wound healing are the first cells to get there. Now, think about it. If you don't stop bleeding, which the platelets are very important in doing, you're just going to keep bleeding. And no matter what cells you get there, you're just going to go through the bleeding and the patient is just going to exsanguinate. You want to stop the bleeding first. The platelets get there first, and the neutrophils come right after. That's during the inflammatory phase. And the inflammatory phase lasts about a week. The neutrophils come there after and start cleaning the dead debris and all the dead cells. And then after about three days, macrophages come in. I put the three stars there because I think the macrophages are the most important cells in wound healing and I say scar formation as well. They come in after three days, and then uh, they are the most important cell during the proliferative phase. Now the proliferative phase overlaps a little bit with the inflammatory phase, but it lasts about three weeks to a month. It's called a proliferative phase is because this is where you st after you cleaned out all the debris during the inflammatory phase, you start putting out new cells in there, start putting down the initial parts of the scar. So you need a lot of cells in there proliferating, dividing to start healing the process. And the macrophages are important because they secrete a lot of cytokines and growth factors and recruit cells that are important in this phase. And also, not shortly after the macrophages come in, fibroblasts come in too. And these, these are the cells that help lay down collagen. So initially, what type of collagen are you going to lay down? If you said type 3 collagen, you would be correct. The type 3 collagen is the first type of collagen that's laid down. And if you think about it, if they talk about granulation tissue, granulation tissue is the first healing part of a wound that you see. It's kind of this glistening thing. You will notice it as a granulation tissue. You have a lot of type 3 collagen. Now, as you progress over uh, your wound healing, you enter the remodeling phase. Now, remodeling phase can last up to a year. And this is where you start refining your wound to kind of laying down the scar to get it back to normal as possible. Now, remember, you will never get to 100% strength of the wound. Your wound is always, it'll probably be around 80% strength from uh, before the injury. And it's one way they like to trick you is that they will never be 100% back to normal. And the fibroblasts are important here. This is where the type 3 collagen is broken down and it's replaced with type 1 collagen. Type 1 collagen is the stronger collagen. It's part of the skin, bone. It's a stronger collagen than type 3. And then what is an important cytokine or growth factor for fibroblasts to do this? I would keep that in mind is TGF beta. TGF beta is very important for fibroblast growth and for fibroblasts to do their work during the remodeling phase. Now, if you think about it, if you have too much TGF beta, then you could have a lot of different pathologies from laying down too much scar or too much type 1 collagen or too much collagen in general. And it's also, this graph can be used to explain why the steroids affect wound healing. Remember, you need inflammation to attract cells to start cleaning process and start laying down tissue and cells for healing. Now, steroids are anti-inflammatory, so they prevent this part. So that's why people who are on chronic steroids have what was called delayed wound healing or decreased wound healing. All right, so let's go down and talk about different pathologies that could be related to this. So here we have what we call a normal scar formation. Uh, you cut through a skin, and instead of replacing the epidermis, which is not going to grow on its own, your body starts laying down a scar. Now, this could be an excessive, and it could be pathologic. 
So in this example, what we call, we have a hypertrophic scar. Now, if you look at it, the scar is in the borders of the wound. So there was a wound that was made here. You just have a lot more scar tissue there, but it's not going beyond, it's not very disorganized. It's not going beyond the borders of the wound. So that's very important to know. In a hypertrophic scar, you have excess type 3 collagen. Now, and its type 3 collagen fibers are laid down in parallel. So I would keep that in mind. This is in contrast to what well, we have a keloid here. Now, uh, here you could see obviously the wound has extended beyond the borders. It's very disorganized. So in this case, there's actually a lot of uh, type 1 and type 3, excess type uh, 1 and type 3 collagen. They're very disorganized, so they're not in parallel. They're just in very disorganized fashion. The big thing between a hypertrophic scar and a keloid is the fact that it extends beyond the borders of the wound. A couple of things I want you to leave with before the end of this lecture. This is excessive healing. Both of these hypertrophic scars and keloids are excessive healing. Keloids have a strong genetic component. Most of the time they're autosomally dominated, whereas hypertrophic scar is not. Actually, hypertrophic scar usually is what we call from a delayed wound healing. So wound healing, you know, like think of an infection. An infection would prevent the wound to heal properly in a timely manner. And that's why, because there's an infection present in the wound, you lay down a lot more scar and you would get a hypertrophic scar. Versus a keloid has a genetic component, disorganized, and it grows beyond the borders. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture. If you did, leave a thumbs up below, leave some comments, and we'll see you soon.